to track the changes in a table, the Snowflake has two built-in features. The first one, known as the stream object, which is pretty popular. The second one, which is a bit lesser known, is called change tracking properties. We have already taken a closer look at these features in our earlier videos, but it's time to explore how they each serve different purpose. There are many important things to learn so that you can use these features effectively ensuring you choose the right one for your data project and understanding their limitations. If you look into the SQL syntax, one difference is very clear. The stream is a separate schema level object which is created on the top of a table. On the other hand, change tracking feature is a table level property and directly associated with table definition. So, in this quick and short video, we will try to cover following things. The first part of the video will quickly show how a stream object works with a simple example and perform delete, insert, update operation and consume the CDC data from the stream object. Next part of the video will focus how change tracking property works and how it works differently from the stream object. So it will be more clearer to you when to use change tracking property versus a stream object. Finally, we'll discuss about some additional differences between these two objects. This is completely hands-on video. So if you want to try along, pause the video, log on to your Snowflake Snow site web UI and start following the instructions. Welcome back to my channel, Data Engineering Simplified. The hands-on exercise covered in this video can be tried in your free trial account. Create an Enterprise Edition instance on AWS so you can access all the feature enabled without any issue. If you have any technical questions, need architectural advice, wants guidance on starting or migrating legacy to Snowflake kind of a data project, do not hesitate to reach out to me on my Instagram account. Many talented Snowflake developers are learning and growing quickly. If you would like to join this exciting journey, be part of my exclusive Facebook group. I am curious to have you on board. You can scan the QR code or find the link in the description section below to join this exclusive Facebook group. So let's start. So we'll take an employee table and try to understand how a stream object captures the changes. This is my first worksheet called stream behavior. Let me quickly change my context. It got changed. Now I am going to create a table called employee 01 where the data retention time in days is equals to one and the change tracking flag is false, which is the default parameter value. This employee table has employee ID, first name, last name, email and designation. So my employee 01 created. Now I am going to load the data through my web UI and that will load around 100 records. Let's quickly review how the employee data looks like. This is my employee CSV file which has close to 100 record and I am going to use my web UI to load this data. So this is my employee table and this is how the structure looks like where email is unique and employee ID is a primary key. Now let's click on the load button. So I have selected my employee underscore 01 CSV. Here my employee 01 table is already selected. Clicking next. Selecting the skip first line, leaving all the options unchanged. Let's click on load button. It's a very small file, so it gets loaded pretty quickly. I can see I have total 100 rows available and let me refresh the page. So there are 100 records and data size is 5 KB looks good so nicole is a first employee at software engineer l0 okay good now if i click on a copy history internally the web ui also uses the copy command to load the data let's go back to our worksheet let's run show tables like emp01 command and try to understand its properties so the name of the table is employee 01, database is learned, schema is public, the type of table is transient, it has 100 rows, retention duration is 1, it has taken roughly 5120 bytes and change tracking is off, looks good. Now I am going to create a stream object on the top of employee 01 named emp01 underscore stream. 
it is created successfully now if i run i would not have any data set good and if you look into the output of the stream object it adds three virtual column automatically on the existing table and the first one is metadata action second one metadata is update and third one is metadata dollar row id in this video we are not going to talk in detail how this stream object works for that you can watch my detailed video which covers everything about this virtual column and how the overall stream works and link is given in the description section i am going to delete employee id 100 and let's see how employee id 100 look like so i am going to delete katherine who has employee id 100 now the employee id got deleted successfully if I run a select statement on my stream object, let's see what does it bring. So here it is clearly telling that this object is deleted because metadata action is deleted and metadata is update is false. So it, it is not an update operation. It is primarily a delete operation. Now I'm going to insert one record using snow site and let's see how that one record looks like. So this is my file employee zero to one row and I am going to load John who is a QA engineer. Let's load it. So when I come to this screen here, I have total 99 rows because one row is already deleted. And let me refresh this. I have a stream object. And if you look into the icon here, it says it is EMP01 stream. And this stream, if I click on this stream, it is Delta type. Now I'm going to load one additional record, which is equal to insert operation. So this is my employee 02 one row dot csv file i'm skipping the first row leaving all the options as is clicking the load button now my one row was successfully inserted into the table looks good if i come to the copy history it says just now one row loaded which is done okay now let's go back to our worksheet so one row is inserted now let's see a stream object should have two records. So Catherine is deleted and John is inserted. Looks good. Now I'm going to update employee 01 and giving the role from software engineer L0 to software engineer L1. If you look into the employee 1, Nicole, this employee has a designation software engineer L0. Now let's change this value using an update operation. So it says number of rows updated one. And if I run this select statement on my stream object, I can see two additional rows. And for Nicole, her designation changed from software engineer, which is treated as a delete operation to software engineer L1 as an insert operation. So this is how the delete, insert and update operations are tracked through the stream object. If I have to consume, I have to run a transactional SQL statement. So I'm going to create a temp table called EMP temp and I'm selecting all the data from the stream object. The moment I do that, so my EMP temp is created and let me run a statement. So I have employee 01 and temp table and temp table which has total four record. And now if I go and check my employee 01 stream object, I have no data available. Okay, looks good. And this is the expected behavior of a stream object. Now we have seen how a stream object captures the changes. Let's jump into change tracking property and we will see how this differs from the stream object. So this is my another worksheet called change tracking. So let me quickly change my context. Now I'm going to create exactly same table named employee 02 and here my change tracking parameter is true. I am going to quickly load the same data set in employee 02 table. For now, I do not have any record. It is empty. So this is my employee 02 table and I will click on the load button. I am going to follow the same operation what I did earlier. Total 100 rows are available. Good. Going back to my worksheet. Now let's run the show command on employee 02 table. So this is my employee 02 table and I have total 100 rows. The size is 6114, slightly higher. A system admin and retention period is one, looks good. Now I'm going to create a stream object. 
so my stream object is successfully created now i do not have any data available in on my stream object looks good now first i am going to capture my timestamp one and if you do not know why we are doing it i would request you to go and watch my previous chapter where i have explained everything in detail about change tracking behavior so i am going to create this current timestamp looks good now i am running a delete operation what i did it in my previous sections it is done now i am capturing second timestamp right after the delete operation so if i run my select statement on the stream object i will have one record and that record will be the employee id 100 looks good so catherine is deleted okay if i run the select statement on my employee 2 table with changes and add clause between two timestamp it should also give me the same detail yes so here also it says catherine is deleted and if you look into the entire result it mimics the stream object so so far so good now i'm going to perform an update operation and in this update operation i am going to update the same employee three times and every time i perform this operation i will capture the timestamp so before i perform this update operation i am going to capture the timestamp underscore one now i am going to update let me correct this table done capturing the timestamp two done changing the employee designation from l1 to l2 done capturing timestamp 3 finally changing the designation from l2 to l3 let's finally capture the current timestamp which is primarily a formality but let me do that now you can pause the video and try to guess what would be the result okay now let me execute this and review the result so if i see catherine which was deleted is captured very well as in the row number three and if i take the nicole nicole has only two entries the first entry is deleted and the second entry is l3 which is the final update operation so this is the behavior for our stream object now what had happened to these two changes which i have lost if you have to really capture these two changes then let me run this particular statement where I am not giving end clause, I am only giving changes followed by add clause. And here I am running a select statement on my employee table along with changes clause and add clause and add timestamp is my line number 46, which is my first timestamp. This SQL statement will give me exactly the same result as we have got it. Since delete operation is done even before that, it has not captured the delete operation. It has only captured the update operation, which is represented by delete followed by insert. But what if I have to capture the intermediate operations? For that, I can add at followed by end and let's do that TS1 to TS2. So I can see designation has changed from L0 to L1, looks good. And if I change it from 2 to 3, it is L1 to L2 and if I do it from T3 to T4, it is L2 to L3. So this is the core difference between your stream object behavior versus change tracking properties. In a change tracking properties, you can really specify the time window and in that time window, what changes are done can be tracked. However, that tracking is lost in a stream object. So if your use case wants to capture changes between two timestamp you should always use change tracking over a stream object however a stream object has other powerful feature which we are going to see in the next part of this video now we have understood how these features work to track the data changes now let's understand some of the other key differences between a stream object and change tracking parameter this is my third worksheet called drop behavior and here we are trying to understand how the drop and undrop feature works with respect to a stream object and the main employee table. So let me change my context. 
Now I'm going to create a table called EMP03, which has data retention period equals to one, max data extension time in days is one, and change tracking equals to true. So all the parameters are enabled. So EMP03 is created. I do not have any data, so I will quickly upload 100 record into this table. So this is my EMP03. So I'm repeating the same process. So my load is done successfully. Going back to my worksheet. I have total 100 rows in this table. Now let's check its attribute. This is my EMP03 table, transient type 100 rows and it has a retention period is one day and change tracking is also on. Now I'm going to create an stream object called EMP03 stream on table EMP03. It is created successfully. Now let's check if I have any CDC data in a stream object. Now before I'm going to perform a delete operation on this table as we did it earlier. And before that I will capture my timestamp PS1. I'm going to delete employee ID 100. So it is done successfully. And let me run my timestamp 2. So I have captured timestamp 1 and timestamp 2 before and after the delete operation. Now my stream object should have one record. Good. If I run the select star from employee 03 table with the changes clause, it should also show me the same deleted employee. Let's drop the employee 03 table, which has a time travel value equals to one. So my table is dropped. And when I run the select statement on my stream object, it complains that employee 03 table is dropped. So it cannot read the employee 03 stream data. I can undrop the table and let's undrop the 03 table. So my employee 03 table is restored. And let me run this statement once again. And it is able to fetch the data. So if you so if you drop the table and the table has a time travel feature enabled, undrop will ensure that the stream will have the CDC changes. So a stream object will capture the CDC and it will not be lost. Now, what if you mistakenly drop the stream object itself? Let's try that out. Employee 03 stream is dropped. Now, if I try to undrop this stream. It says undrop is not supported for object type stream. Okay, what it means my CDC is lost. However, if I run this statement, my CDC is still intact through change tracking properties. Okay, so, so this is one of the key difference in their behavior. If you mistakenly drop your stream object, you won't be able to recover the stream object. However, if you drop the table and you recover the table, your CDC changes are still available through your changes clause. If you notice one thing, a stream object is a separate object which is created on the top of your table. However, change tracking is a property. So if you have a requirement where you want to restrict the changes to be visible only a certain role, in that case, a stream can be a helpful object. However, if your change tracking is enabled for a table, anybody who has a select privileges on a table can also see the changes done on the table. Right. There is one more feature which is available through the stream is called a stream has data. If you are creating a task and if the task wants to know whether your table has a CDC data or not, in that case, CDC from the stream can be captured through the system dollar stream has data function. However, if you have created the CDC via change tracking parameter, it is not possible to associate that parameter with your task. So this is another limitation with your change tracking parameter. So now we have covered what is the core differences between a stream object versus change tracking parameter directly associated with the table. And as per your use case, you can decide whether you would like to use a stream object or you would like to enable the change tracking parameter to capture CDC or a Delta data. So we have covered all the objectives, the stream object behavior followed by change tracking property behavior and how they differ from each other and when to use a stream object over change tracking, including their limitations. I hope you have enjoyed this short and quick informative video.
Snowflake tables hold many key insights. To become a Snowflake Cloud Data Warehouse Pro, make sure to catch all the videos in this playlist. Thanks for tuning in to this quick tutorial. If you have found it valuable, hit the like button. By doing so, YouTube will serve up more Snowflake content from my channel to help you on your Snowflake learning journey. Happy learning and keep on growing.